I'm going to do my next drawing with um, charcoal and again I've packed out some, some variety of sticks of charcoal, thinner ones, uh, the pencil stick and I also just for an experiment uh, made myself a tool which is really just a little bamboo stick, um, any stick and wrapping cotton wool or cloth um, there's, there's this gauze with some masking tape um, to create your own tool to be able to draw. Um, it is, as alternative drawing tools, really exciting um, for learners to discover their own material. Little sticks in the backyard, I mean one can even take a stick and then bash it with a hammer on the front that you get a fluffy texture and to draw with that is, is really lovely. It's, it's exploring um, a much more unique way of drawing. So I've just created one here. Um, another way is also understanding brushes that's really messed up and one can even cut parts of it off, making it more messy uh, as a drawing tool. I will make some marks with that so we can see what to get out of it. So I've chosen as an object an old shoe that's full of mold and um, and that has quite a bit of character. Uh, I placed it on a white surface because I do enjoy the way the shadows play. One can consider when you draw an object if you want to have definition to put something like a, a striped cloth underneath it. So just considering how, how lines will play if I have this and so there's a lot of lines moving through, defining, pushing the object forward. But for today, let's keep it simpler and just look at... I loosened the lace just to see if I can have some positive, negative play here with the lines moving towards the shoe. So, um, let's, today, let's at this stage look more at the volume of the shoe as well and how I'm going to define uh, volume. So once again, I observe the shoe. I imagine how the shoe would lie on my surface. Um, it's lying at the diagonal line. I can use my instrument to once again position it. And if I bring it down, I get a feeling of the, of the diagonal. I often close one eye in order to, to measure where it goes from tip to heel and how it would lie on my picture plane. Um, I analyze my, sh my shoe by looking where is halfway mark about, um, you know, to what extent is that unit and that unit. So I see for myself where is the midway of my object uh, against the vertical. Uh, I once again measure where is the width of the shoe is about that. That's about my halfway mark. Um, I understand how far this line is lying. Now instead of starting with a wiper portion, I'd like to start with it as a mass. I've understood by looking at it um, where the proportions are to some extent. I also want to understand what is top, what is top and what is side. Because that's for me always important information describing. Now something like a shoe is a, is a more complex object. So I'm going to start by breaking my charcoal in two and just feeling as it were Still too big. <laughs> Trying to feel where is that volume at the top and where, how does that move. So I move, trying to feel this is, it's as if I'm placing my hand on top of it and I am visually feeling on my paper where does the top of the shoe sit. Where does it sit? And now I want to say where does the side sit. So I'm trying to feel where does the side sit of the shoe, there the, towards the tip, and then here the shoe moves in this direction. So I'm trying to say that I'm feeling this, I'm feeling that direction, um, trying to describe the roundness of this. Um, Okay, there's a very dark, hollow part here, so I'm trying to also, in my medium, feel where is that hollowness of the shoe. And I'm turning my medium to 
really like I'm excavating, I'm understanding the hollowness that is part of the shoe there, moving around. Okay, and then there's a, there's a sole that moves sharply around here and it curves and it moves around there. Oh, there's a dark place, I'm finding that. There's dark, I'm trying to describe this bulging out. Now I'm seeing there is a dark shadow here where it's lying on the top and on my side there's a dark shadow here. So I'm going to just place that in with the flatness of this. I'm seeing a, quite a dark area here as well. So you can see I'm really looking at a volume of where this, of, of how this form. I'm trying to describe that for the viewer. You can already have a little bit of a sense of that shoe sitting on my white page. So at this stage I can either use maybe another instrument, I could use, let's use the experimental and I will maybe try and rub this a bit smoother. You see I rub some of it out when I go over it, but I also rub it into the paper. You know one always ex thinks of paper as just the surface, but paper is material and as I work, I, I literally rub the material into the bits of the paper to make it feel like it belongs to this, to this page. And as I'm doing this and creating my own marks, I'm sort of understanding that a leather shoe is polished. And I can still see, even though this is one is quite worn and, and uh, past its, its best, um, I understand that once upon a time we polished the shoe, so I quite like this mark that I'm getting here. And there's still some of that polish there, so a little bit of the smoothness that we can put in the shadow there. And moving back, so I'm going to take another medium again, and I'm now going to start defining sharper lines maybe. And now I want to look a little bit at that outer edge. Let's see, is it going? So sometimes one is not sure about in what direction the, the line goes. And the easiest is then to understand, once again, the verticality of my page. I'll hold a vertical, I'll close one eye, and I will look at it and have a point. And I see if I have my pencil aligned with that point, it touches on the other side, yeah. So this line here shifts out to it. Ah, so now I see I have it in this direction and in reality it shifts in that direction. So I can see the errors of my drawing and I just go back and I say, okay, it's more in that direction because I have to define the back. I've just been focusing on this side. I need to define the volume of the back of the shoe. Okay. And there's my sole going around, but now I understand what I did wrong. And the sole moving in this direction, the hollow and the sole moving in this direction. I'm going to look at that leathery soft bit at the top there again. And the shoe feels like it's sitting on my, on my surface. Okay, so now I'm going to build with a little bit of a different mark. I just want to build some of that darkness up here again which I've erased um, and maybe start describing it with some soft lines how it moves around there and in this direction the cut of this seam and it moving around here there's also lines in the patterning of the shoe and really getting to focus on where where do I find, like this is a very woolly line that I have at the back here, of this little bit sticking around, then a sharper line here, sharp line here, nice dark sharp lines that I get around there, moving around, finding that here it becomes softer and much thinner, and then I can see the push of that leather, more organic, and it moving around and now I'm finding the tip of that shoe here and I follow the outline trying to get that smooth roundness going there and there's a bit of a bulge here moving out. So I'm using this in a way ghost image to now start finding the shapes and the lines with on that. 
and it helps me to understand the shape. So we're going to go back to that and now we can just fill it. We can build much thicker lines. I am now trying to describe the depth of that and I'm building that with little lines. I want to describe that shoe moving over there and I want to show the straight line here moving. So now I'm working with linear qualities over the mass. Okay. I'm also going to start, even before I'm very far, I'm going to start thinking about where's the shadow lines. And there's quite a bit of a shadow on that side, so that my object belongs on the paper. You do it like this, it's nice and messy there, and it's much softer in reality, so I'm going to use this and just, once again, rub it into the page to get the ghostly, softer qualities. Back here, and now building the darkness of this up in little lines, building it up, finding the sharpness of the soul again, and describing the roundness of this. What I want to do is build one area up quite dark, so that we can also look at if we excavate, how that excavation can have other qualities. So building it up, this is brownish, which is a very dark line at the bottom. So let's just focus on the back here of the shoe a little bit. Now everybody has their own styles. I'm an expressionist artist uh, in general and I, I work with marks that's rough um, uh, describing feeling, uh, there are artists that are that prefer working far more delicate, and that is the style of the artist. So not everybody will have the expressive style that I draw with, and um, that is really good. We don't want to draw all the same, and you definitely don't want all your learners to to draw exactly like you do. That will be they will not uh, speak of their own life experience and their own um, emotions. So I'm really starting to feel the shoe moving forward and that jolting into the, the distance as well with the dark that I have there and the light qualities. Um, I'm going to build some of the texture of the bottom part of the soles, build that up a bit. Try and get that line there and looking at these thick rubber um, grips not precisely right but it gives you more or less the feeling it suggests the feeling of these shoes these old shoes I want to get this quite gray but a light gray not as dark and, uh, and, and heavy as that because I've got a very specific plan for the tip of this shoe I want to describe it moving forward the toe and the side of it moving here bring some darkness in there because I want to work a bit with the eraser as well. Okay, and the sharpness of, right. So it's quite interesting with this, this morning when I look at this moldy shoe in the corner of the room. Um, it used to be worn by my husband and I'm, he always worked all over and I loved the old shoe, so I would, I don't want to throw it away. It speaks of all the labor and us building stuff in the, in, in, in the area. And I think that's part of the history, a personal history for me as well. So I think objects generally also speak of personal history. And this is why it's quite important that the learners to choose their own objects, objects that they connect to, objects that associate with people and experience. So I'm going to now see how we can suggest, this is the putty rubber, you can see one can really push it around, shape it, have it sharper or flatter, and let's see if we do some, so it lifts, that's what it does, it lifts some of that charcoal, and it has a different kind of mark, it's not the kind of mark your hand can make, um, so I want to have a more textured mark, and I'm twirling and twisting it so that I can get a more textured mark evoking the sense of that uh, of the mold that sits on the shoe 
So I'm just dotting around, seeing how can I get this moldy shoe. And then there's... So another thing I want to show you is... Okay, that is adhesive spray. Okay, let's work a bit with that. So any spray you can use, this is spray adhesive, but you can use hairspray um, or fixative, whatever you have available, to get your... So I'm just going to spray a little bit on it. Because I want to show you also one thing's always just of drawing marks, a simple drawing. I have this cute little grater, you can use any size. <laughs> and so if I want to get that powdery feel, if I draw it, I'm maybe not going to be able to do it. But if I decide to grate on it, maybe like this or like that, it will have another feel. It immediately feels a little bit, I don't know, dirtier. Um, it feels that is sort of dust and that so I might get that feeling by just simply grating and then I can decide do I want to push this into the paper to have it to remain there and I'm gonna <laughs> blow it away mmm quite like that it really has a feeling of deposits on it instead of trying to draw that mark so I'm gonna do some here as well and I just push it into that slightly sticky surface so those I don't like and I'm gonna take that away and now draw over that again. So those that you don't want, you can just remove. Um, these, there are also places on this where the white marks are, are more unified. So I'll, let's use a bit of these and see how we can just rub it around the finger. This is the extension of your pencil and you do a bit of rubbing on there. Now it gives you a softer gray. Because I'm using, this is ordinary chalk that you use on a blackboard. Um, I rubbed a bit too much on it, so I'm going to give it a quick spray in. Just to, sorry my cameraman, that I bombard you with gas. <laughs> We're going to get that old shoe a bit, push it into that. This is more experimental way of drawing. Okay, and it in a, some ways more painterly. Now I can draw the little creases in the rubber, oh, in the leather, sorry, that sits there and if I drag my instrument hard, I mean this is a shoe that's labored and that's uh, worked in the in the dust and in the, so I want to get that suggestion of, of marks that speak about the intensity of labor, the feel of labor. And that is why my mark making it's maybe slightly more harsh than if I would draw something delicate, like a flower. So I'm just trying to evoke that darkness there. And a bit there again. And the tip of that shoe, which is nice and dark. Moving around here. So the nice thing of, of charcoal is its experimental qualities that, so if you want to have something much smoother, fine, you can have the sort of a color in, the rubber at the bottom is far smoother. And you can see I'm working quite messy going over the edges, but we're going to look at how we can counter that. And this is much more feeling of smoothness that I have at the sole than the textured feeling of the leather. So Go and feel it as well to understand how do I get that quality up, built up there. And you can see I'm not in the beginning that worried about the precise detail in the shoe. I am more concerned about getting the feeling of this object. I'm going <laughs> to blow again. Good. I'm quite happy with the progress of this, getting the feel of it. What we're going to look at now is just some sharp detail. Okay, so I'm going to just suggest, yeah. So this has got quite a bit of glueiness on it of that spray. I want there to be a big contrast here because things that contrast move forward. So this is a place where I want my contrast. I work back with my eraser into that gray area again, pushing it back. It's interesting with drawing, there's always that sense of laying down materials and then you 
and then you push them back again and then you build them up and you push them back and in that way one overcomes your fear of doing something wrong and it really becomes this lovely discovery building up <laughs> so what's happening here is I'm trying to get a sense of depth as well playing with this part of the shoe disappearing into the background I'm gonna fix that messiness now As a painter, I'm so messy in my drawing as well. But uh, personally, I like that. Some people will feel like they're going to get a heart attack if their drawings become dirty. <laughs> and I feel it's awesome. It's more stuff to push around and grab and, and, and work with. So I'm trying to get that shadow there, but I also want to use this to have the fact that the shoe is sitting on the surface in places and in other places it's pushing away. So yeah, I want that sharp, intense contrast. And I'm working back my negative shape with my eraser. And there, I've got long shadows doing this. Maybe sharper, cleaner edges here and cleaner edges there. And maybe if that shape is not right, I can also with my eraser push it back so that I have something that's shot closer to the illusion of the shoe. Okay, let's try some white chalk here. I really need white Conte, but um, I'm gonna work that into the paper with a chalk so that we can get a soft feel and you can see I'm applying quite a bit of force because it's now become quite oily because of the spray that I'm putting put on but I'm utilizing this as a surface and an off-white color which is actually becoming quite quite nice I always say there's nothing like a fail drawing it's just not finished so you can go on and work and work until you get that feel of the of the material and of the shoe climbing out of the paper. I'm just going to build that up because this has got a creamy look to it. Much more fleshy feeling. I'm also feeling the direction of the surface here. So I'm working with some of these um, these lines moving in that direction and maybe building the understanding of the space moving in here Pull, pushing that back let's push that back a bit a lot of grey in there good okay uh, last line drawing so we can finish our drawing um, at this stage what one can do is let the learners put up their drawings and you talk about each of the drawing and try and see so that sense of standing back um, observing looking from a distance comparing different learners drawings with each other see the one learner maybe discovered oh I used the greater the other discovered no, I used more dots on it so each one can actually then pick up from the other how they have tried to evoke the sense of the shoe um, and then you everybody goes back and they work again so for me the shoe doesn't have enough contrast and detail so we go back and draw in the contrast more i'll draw with darker lines trying to find the shoe i'm going to start putting in aspects like stitching that's maybe on the shoe Here's a line that moves across here. I also want to use some of my white. Maybe push that back a bit. Seeing that I started working with a light in the background. Just to bring it into the drawing as well. And there's a, quite a nice reflection of light on this side. Which I'm pushing the drawing to have light reflecting on that side. And there's a beautiful sharp line in the, in the shoe and moving in that side. <laughs> I also find a lovely sharp line of white here. 
and this curling around. We're just going to play a bit there. Good. Now what you need is a bit of detail. Once again, having sharp lines in the front. One doesn't have to draw, make a drawing complete. Um, there is something wonderfully alive about a drawing that is in process. A drawing that's still searching for where qualities are. And it is as if it, it invites the viewer to participate in a way, um, thinking, okay, how can I take this drawing further? How will, how will I, just with a suggested line, an implied line, how could I, how will my eye be part of this process, understanding the quality and the life of this object? And I'm trying to get that light dark, finding the curve of this lace, it goes under the shoe, taking it back to the shoe, warm here now. Okay, and we find those laces again and the sharpness of that line of that. And I want to get the sharp line of this. I quite like the so I just I love my great eye. I discovered it quite recently so I'm gonna bring a bit of dirt here just for the sake of these are dirty shoes. So so it's a different kind of mark that I'm making with little dots. Dot is the start of a line. So, and we can... Good, blow that away. Try not to blow too much into my mic. So what we need is some sharp lines in the shoe. Maybe we can use the eraser, see if that works. Okay, it's very thickly worked on now, so we would rather use our white to draw a bit of contrast in these lines. And that is very light there, but interesting, there's a nice little shadow of this lace that one can maybe play with, bringing it in just for some extra dynamics. And a shadow is always the sharpest way, it touches the uh, the object and as it moves away so here it will for example be sharper than in the distance and it sort of fades away on that side if one traces that line okay and i think the last thing is a little bit more white we want to get that little metal buckle there And a few more stitches just for detail and interest. So I sort of select things that I draw. Even if you take a photograph, you select parts that you're going to photograph, there is always selection. It never is the total representation of what you draw. And, um, and your drawing is also just a selection of things that caught your individual eye in the way that you want to portray the object. I'm going to get a little bit more smoothness in there and I'm nearly finished here. Let's do that one. We get a bit of sharpness there. Get a bit of lines just to define the edge there. And a little bit of smoothness here. Maybe you can, yeah, I think that is fine. One more dark line here just to bring that a bit forward. And some here. Then I think I'm quite happy. We'll have a last grating here <laughs> on that point. Um, just apart from that, what you can possibly do is you can also um, dunk in water and see what happens. As an exploration, what happens if you would rub it with water because your charcoal is going to just to experiment, react completely different when um, you have a liquid, it doesn't do all that much, but uh, it's, it's worthwhile for the experimentation. You can work back into the lightness I'm starting to. If, that, if something like that happens, where now I've made a big, um, I've actually damaged the paper here, leave it to dry, 
And when it's dry, you work over it. Simple as that. But if I'm going to work into this now, I'm just going to make a hole in the paper. So I'm going to leave that to dry. I just need to get that to be nice and sharp so it can stand out. And I've got enough shoeness here. So I'm going to take that image and turn it around. And we can get the feeling of the shoeness. Take it out. And here's our shoeness. So, <laughs> so it's not necessary exactly the way the shoe looks, but it's an old shoe. It's a cracked shoe and it's dirty. And <laughs> I have a feeling that somebody wore it. And that's the feeling of the marks, the making that one chose to do. Thank you.